All right? How's everybody doing? Yeah? All right. All right. So I'm Roman Storm. Um, I'm a contributor of a project called Tornado.cache. And today we're going to talk about some uh, evolutions of uh, privacy tech on Ethereum, or the legacy version of Tornado Cache, and the upcoming versions that we're working on. So what is Tornado Cache? So Tornado Cache is a non-custodial privacy protocol for Ethereum blockchain. So the problem is the blockchain is like your Twitter for your bank account. Everybody can see everything. And uh, if you run a business, you probably want to have some sort of privacy to, in order to conceal some data from your competitors. Or let's say if you want to do a payroll to your employees and you don't want your employees to know how much everybody gets. Um, so there is a certain lack of privacy. It could be a showstopper for uh, blockchain companies. Um, Growing popularity of chain analysis tools already drives the need for on-chain privacy. Yeah. So yeah, like we wanna like to say, privacy is a feature; it's not a product, and uh, we need privacy within the DeFi ecosystem, not on a separate privacy chain. Um, most privacy features are implementable directly on top of Ethereum, and Tornado Cash Classic implementation is just the first step. Uh, so what do we have right now in the space? We have a technology called CoinJoin, and uh, there are a few wallets that have successfully implemented it. It's called Wasabi and Samurai. It only works on Bitcoin chain. And the way it works is basically every coordination set is limited to certain anonymity set. So basically like it could be like 10 or 20. Uh, that's the, basically the limitation of it. Mambo Wimbo protocol is, pro allows you to provide you some confidentiality, which basically doesn't provide full anonymity. It only hides the amounts that you're sending, but it doesn't hide the uh, recipient. Monero is pretty good, strong uh, privacy protocol on a separate chain. Uh, it uses ring signature tech. Um, it also could, uh, so basically, uh, th the way it works, for each input, they give 10 DK inputs, which are fake. So there could be some mechanism be done to de-anonymize certain transactions. Zcash, um, very strong project with uh, extensive research, uh, very good polished product. Uh, the only problem, it's not a DeFi project. It lives on a separate chain. Uh, but overall, the tech is perfect. Um, so then we have a couple of projects on Ethereum at stack. At stack is a privacy protocol with a lot of uh, composable modules that people can use, and it, ha it also uses its own roll-up chain. So I think they're building something really cool. They're using different proving system, uh, Plonk, uh, which is a next version in a in a in a pro prover systems. So then we also have Tornado Cash. So what are the current stats for Tornado Cash? Uh, there are around maybe 100k transactions on mainnet, which equals to 10 million in volume daily volume, uh, over 500 million TVL, uh, which is like uh, almost two percent of all Ethereum that has passed through Tornado Cash. So, but there are some issues with the Tornado Cash plus six. So the first issue is uh, fixed pool amounts are inconvenient. So if you have like uh, four ether, you can't just deposit all this four ether. You have to split them into four separate transactions per one ether, which is not ideal. Uh, also the gas cost on mainnet is quite expensive. Uh, one million gas, gas cost for deposit and 400K to withdraw. Uh, which comes next version of Tornado Cash is called Tornado Cash Nova, uh, which solves some of those problems. It's a basically privacy pool with internal transactions, which allows you to do arbitrary amounts deposit. Um, it also has a really cool feature. It's called shielded transfers within a single pool, 
What I mean by that, uh, once you deposit, you don't have to withdraw on mainnet. You can just stay in the pool and transfer the ownership of your Ether in any amounts to somebody else. Uh, for, uh, to make the transactions are cheaper, it uses the Gnosis chain under the hood, but it's easily swappable and deployable to any other L2 once they became more mature and ready for true decentralization. Uh, also, the Gnosis chain has a, um, that's the only side chain we, th that during our research that we found that has uh, all the uh, bridging functionalities that allows instant withdrawals and arbitrary call data um, feature. So I can show you a quick demo of the Tornado Cache Nova. So the way it works, you go to the Tornado Cache, you log in with your MetaMask account. In my, uh, it's set on mainnet network. So you input whatever amount you want to deposit. Right now there is a limit of one ether because the product was launched in December. So like to make sure it's robust and stable. So when you click deposit, it's gonna um, upload some events from the blockchain in order to calculate the latest Merkle route. Uh, then it generates some ZK, zero knowledge proofs and then it sends a transaction on mainnet. Behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, okay, we can explain later. So I sped up this video a little bit so you wait like 20 uh, block confirmations and then you have a deposit on your account. Um, so once you have it, you can either spend this deposit to somebody else, which is gonna be uh, shielded transfer on L2. So you don't have to like send any, um, uh, one second, yeah, so, yeah, so you insert your amount, provide the recipient address, click transfer. The only limitation is that this address has to be registered already with a, a Tornado Cash Nova pool. And once it's done, as you notice, like you didn't even have to uh, interact with the MetaMask. You can just insert address, amount, click, it's done. If you want to ag exit from Tornado Cash to mainnet, you go to withdrawal tab, select the amount, it's gonna do the same process update the Merkle root, generate the zero knowledge proof, and send the transactions. That's, that's it pretty much for the Tornado Cash Nova. However, um, yeah, how it works under the hood. So on layer one, we have MetaMask, and we have uh, XDAI bridge. So you generate some like data, you put it in a bridge, and the XDAI bridge uh, is gonna call the Tornado Cash pool contract, which lives on a L2. Shielded transfer, no MetaMask required. You basically generate some client side data, you send it to decentralized reware's network on Tornado Cash, and any reware can pick up your, um, pick up your data and uh, send it through Tornado, Tornado Cash pool. Keep in mind, reware's are fully trustless, so they cannot steal any of your funds because you're basically giving them the zero knowledge proofs with uh, some hard-coded data in there that they, they cannot modify. Um, withdrawal functionality, so basically same, same, same as transfer, except that um, you generate this data, you give the reware, reware initiates the transfer on Tornado Cash Pool, and then it sends it back to the uh, bridge reware, which is operated by uh, XDAI team. And then the, it unwraps the ether from Gnosis chain and puts it back into your account on mainnet. So current Tornado Cash Nova stats, uh, there are already over 5,000 shielded transfers happened and uh, around 3,000 wallets registered, which equals to 3,000 Ether deposited because of the one ETH limit on each deposit. Um, and there is about like one million TVL. How does it work under the hood? So basically it's a giant Merkle tree. And when you make a deposit, you publish your commitment hash. Um, and then the, it builds the whole tree of all the, of those commitments. So essentially, you gener generate two completely random, random uh, values, which is a nullifier and secret. Your nullifier hash is a hash of your nullifier and secret, and nullifier hash is a hash of a nullifier. So the 
public inputs are your Merkle root, which you generate on a client side, and the nullifier hash. The private inputs that is only available to you is uh, your nullifier, secret, and Merkle proof. It's enough for the snark inputs. So when, when you, how does the withdrawal works is basically you prove that you're part of the, this whole big tree without revealing which exact leaf you are on this tree. Um, yeah. So, it, so that was the explanation how the legacy version of Tornado Cache works. So with the, how does the Tornado Cache Nova work that allows you to do arbitrary amounts? So now we have a one, um, few different uh, inputs, which basically the amount, public key and secret. And the same here, same idea, uh, we generate a commitment hash in nullifier hash, but it consists of a different inputs for the each hash. So uh, Tornado Cache Nova is ut uses the UTXO model under the hood. So for each two outputs, there are two new inputs. So basically your node is your uh, input. So you, whenever you do a transactions, you spend the outputs and generate uh, to new inputs. And it includes in the whole Merkle tree. Uh, if you want to chat more about those technical details, feel free to chat with me offline um, after the talk. So, but that's not it, because the Tornado Cache Nova still has some limitations, and the next version could be implemented with ERC-20 token support, which is super easy to add. All we need is to add the asset ID for uh, SNARKs inputs. Um, ERC-721 or ERC-1155 support is also possible to do. Also, shielded atomic swaps, which basically means you can swap any asset to any other asset uh, privately shielded, so you don't have to review what you're swapping, what kind of asset, and what amount. Uh, diversified addresses, uh, it's a really cool feature that allows you to generate multiple public keys for a single private key. So if you want to interact with the random people on the internet and uh, you don't want to manage the array of your private keys, you can just have one private key, but for each new uh, person, you can generate new public key. Viewing keys, it allows for compliance compatibility, so which basically means Tornado Cache is not a, like a black box, so all your uh, history of transactions are, are private, but for compliance reasons, you can review yourself, so you can generate a report of all your uh, private history for any requested authority that wants to know your origin of funds. Uh, the next version could potentially utilize ROWAP, whatever becomes available on the market, um, it's totally doable and probably would be much better than using sidechains. Um, and the transactions fees could be paid with a single unified asset, which could be any ERC-20 token. That's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So the question is, are the secret and nullifier are stored in a browser session storage? So uh, it generates on the client side and is given to you so you can back up and store it wherever you want. Uh, if you don't want to store it in like a local storage in your session, you can just use incognito modes in browsers and just wipe your data after you, after you use it. Yes, if you don't back up your data, you're, it's done, nobody can help you. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, for the shielded transfers, uh, you can do that with a MetaMask, so you don't pay for the gas, so who pays uh, for the gas? So from uh, your input, uh, for when you generate a zero, okay, so the question is, how do you pay the fees without using MetaMask when you do the shielded transfer? The answer is, Basically, your ZK, uh, ZK snark scheme has one additional input fee, which and the address who can receive this fee, 
so when you generate the fee, you pre-select the whatever reware address you want to use and then code how much the maximum fee you want to pay. So the smart contract, when it's going to generate the proof, the proof is valid, then the reware can utilize those fields from your node so that the reware is incentivized to issue your uh, transfer on-chain. Go ahead. So I noticed that the, the amounts are restricted to very specific ones, I assume, so you wouldn't see like unique amounts that could tie to a unique transfer. Um, if that's the case, do you see that being something that you can, uh, do you ever see that being something where you could use custom amounts without like becoming traceable? I, could you re simplify your question or, I didn't, I didn't get it. Oh, so I guess I'll ask one question that might lead to another question. With a tornado cache, uh, can I use a really specific amount? Um, and if I do that, do I like, potentially make myself more traceable? Yeah, that's correct. So um, in order to withdraw a certain amount, if you, you can see the, on the video, uh, let me just show it to you so that on a withdrawal tab, it's actually uh, right now like on the UI, it's, it's kind of recommended just please use these pre-selected amounts to withdraw. However, you can make a custom withdrawal to with any amount, but you have to be cautious about your privacy. Yes, you are right that uh, it can potentially review yourself if you're not being careful how much you deposited, how much you withdraw, and if you do some kind of weird amounts, it could be potentially uh, um, using some analytics uh, external analytics to uh, de-anonymize yourself. Gotcha. Do you think that's ever going to be a solvable problem, or is that just going to be a limitation? <laughs> that's the just the one of the rules of the crypto. It's like basically everybody knows you have to store your mnemonic key phrase somewhere safely. It just it's a really hard problem to solve. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So uh, you mentioned that you are using uh, you use Gnosis because you can uh, do the transfers uh, immediately. So, like, how, do it, how is it possible? Is it because they, provide, they have liquidity providers on L1? Uh, no, so we're using just the Gnosis chain to de, to, that is used for deployment of Tornado Cash pool contracts. It's basically a side chain, which is, it's potentially easy, easy to swap to any other side chains where the smart contract is going to live. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, any any thoughts? Like as you're looking at other rollups, do you see zk rollups as being potentially more appealing? They technically aren't privacy zero knowledge, but do you think that the fact they're using zero knowledge technology makes them potentially better for your use case? Definitely yes. So the question is, uh, do we see the rollups technology as appealing to privacy protocol? I believe yeah, rollups are not technically specifically focused on solving privacy stuff. However, there's, uh, they're uh, solving the scalability issues which every like uh, intense computational programs like privacy and zero knowledge proof needs. So yes, it will be great beneficial for the whole ecosystems if we have some kind of generic roll up chain that everybody is using and so that Tornado Cash can also utilize it for uh, better uh, gas, uh, gas optimizations and faster withdrawal times. Any thoughts on like StarkNet and Cairo specifically? Uh, um, we, uh, which one mentioned, Starkware? Uh, StarkNet. StarkNet. Uh, or, yeah, actually, yeah, well, they're all the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Starkware, I think it's very interesting product. Um, uh, uh, I'm not really sure if it's like they're fully ready yet for the prime time so that everybody can use their technology. They have this like uh, language called Cairo, I believe. So you would have to learn and do that. Um, I think they're still not ready just yet for the prime time. I think they're still working on a full EVM compatibility so it could be easily ported your, so you can port your smart contracts on their own chain. And, but hopefully they're gonna maybe this year. Uh, it's like everybody keeps telling that they're doing some roll-ups, like so many companies out there. But when you ask anyone, okay, what's ready right now, today? Can I use it? And it's like usually there 
always some kind of issues, limitations, breach with roles, or like let's say Arbitrum ha doesn't, still doesn't have an archive node, so you can't even analyze any internal transactions or anything. So there are still some limitations in each rollup solution. Um, or like bridge withdrawal like with a seven day delay. Uh, yeah. All right. 